Hello you guys, as per your request, I'm gonna quickly show you today how I create 3D coins that I often use in my explainer videos. Here you can see some examples of how I use such coins. Let's recreate this particular 3D coin in After Effects. First thing, we create a new shape layer. For that, we right click and choose new shape layer, quite obvious. And then when we go inside of that layer, we see there is this little add button, which allows us to add extra content. At the moment, the layer is empty, right? And we want to add an ellipse to it since we're designing a coin. We can go inside the ellipse and adjust the size as we want. Again, at this moment, the ellipse is just an empty path and we won't actually see it, don't we? So we need to add a fill to it and choose a color something yellowish in this case will do just fine like this then we also want our ellipse to have an actual visible outline at least for the design we're aiming at today so we add a stroke and choose a color for it too i'll select black for this one but speaking of golden coins i sometimes use a dark amber shade it looks pretty cool too so you guys experiment Let's go ahead and click that stroke and see that inside we also have various parameters we can play with. Among all of them, we'll find dashes and that's what we're looking for. Let's click that plus button two times and adjust the length of dashes and gaps. I want my dashes to be like three pixels, I guess, and I'll leave 10 for the gaps. Awesome. Then we need another shape layer with an ellipse and a stroke in it. We already know how to do it. But this time I want the ellipse to be noticeably smaller than the coin. Moreover, let's add another ellipse because we're serious designers, aren't we? Why should we stop with just one? And let's adjust the size of that second ellipse and make it somewhat the size of the coin. Let's summarize. We have our yellow coin, two circles inside of it and a dashed circle on the outer side. So far, so good. We're doing great. Now let's actually indicate somehow that it's a coin and type some kind of a sign on it, dollar or euro or whatever currency you wish. We're getting closer to that 3D magic and the next step is parenting two upper layers to the bottom one. So we only have to control the bottom layer and all the other layers that are parented to it will follow and copy whatever the parent layer is doing. Now we have to switch that 3D cube on and also tick it on each layer here like so. And now when we open the content of our bottom layer, we'll see additional parameters have emerged. We are interested in geometry options, okay? And precisely extrusion depth. Let's make it 15 for this layer and also we have to extrude the upper shape layer which consists of two circles as you guys remember but we want the extrusion amount here to be one point higher so not 15 but 16. We also can quickly find these parameters just using this search bar very useful tool that makes life so much easier if you don't use it use it. And now the moment of truth, the catharsis of the opera. Let's actually go ahead and try to rotate the coin and see if it's a nice 3D object now. As I mentioned already, we only have to rotate the bottom layer and the top layers will follow because they are parented to the bottom one, okay? As you can see, we needed dashes on the outer side of the circle to have these coin ribs. We can now tweak the parameters if we need to, now that we see how the element looks in 3D space. And when we rotate the coin a bit more, we see that we have these two circles on the back side. Because the extrusion of the upper shape layer was deeper or taller or bigger, or I don't know how you call it correctly, but you see what I mean, guys. It was 16 instead of 15, right? And that's why the circles are visible on the back side too. Are you guys with me? Let me just quickly demonstrate. If the extrusion numbers are equal, 15 and 15, no circles for us. Once the upper layer is extruded slightly more, boom, the circles appear. Little nuance, but I like it when it's there. What do you think? Now we can set the keyframes for the rotation so that our coin makes it into the scene with a nice rotation along the y-axis, which I almost always choose for round objects. Looks okay, there is this little bounce that I also like. And the last thing I want to show you guys is the material options. And we can play with parameters listed in here. Namely, we can choose if our element casts or accepts shadows and if it accepts lights. I don't know if you guys see it, but when the coin rotates, there is this little reflection of light, like it was really made of reflective material like metal. Some styles, especially if we talk about flat design, in my humble opinion, <laughs> imply the absence of reflection and gradients because the design is intentionally simplified. You see what I mean? At least this is how it looks better to me. It's a matter of taste, of course, but I often switch the reflection off 
Not all the time though, but I assume it's worth mentioning that you can actually choose whether or not you wish the element in your scene to look more realistic. Maybe it's not the desired look for your particular project and now you know where you can change that. Okay buddies, I hope this video was useful. Smash that like button if so and subscribe for more content in the future. I'll see you next time. Cheers!